think Jose Mourinho once said that for him, the match starts with the press conference. I wonder, <laughs> do you feel the same? <laughs> Uh, Jose, Jose is a master of that, so Jose says that for sure, uh, yes, and I think um, there are some really good examples and how he did it, yeah. Do you feel the same in your own mind? Well, it's part of it, for sure, and, uh, and I'm sure that the players speak a lot of information, or the managers speak information, our supporters speak information, so yeah, we have to be as open as we want, and it's an opportunity for sure to send the messages across that we believe are important. And as part of that, would you watch the press conference of, for example, Sheffield United this weekend? Yes. What kind of thing are you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it's good. Every information that you can see, you see behaviours on the touchline. You know how they behave, how they act, how they react to referees, how they interact between them, and it's it's another way to understand how they think. You know how they see us as well, and uh, and the perception that you get of how they have prepared to to the game. Okay. Thank you. And Nicole, something that was touched on a few weeks ago was just different sports like rugby, watching a game from a different vantage point. And I know you won't be doing that, but you've probably got other guys who do it. I was just wondering, from an information standpoint, how much information are you actually getting during the game? And how much of a decision is based on that? Or is it just kind of gut feeling? Both. Uh, obviously, we have to use the technology and the data that we have right now. Um, to, to be more precise and and to be more efficient in how we have to win to present the information and what we can get live right now, it's, uh, it's extremely good and uh, we have to use it. In terms of being like a, a football man, is that something you like or... Because there are people who feel they prefer football from 20 years ago, 30 years ago, um, whereas they feel today's football might be a bit too much, too precise in a way. Yeah. Um, what do you feel? I live the present, and the present is what we have right now, you know, and, and try to use every single tune in a way that um, that empowers your qualities, you know. If there are certain things that are going to take things from your gut feeling or decision making, um, depending where that information is coming from can be, can be dangerous, but at the same time it can be really powerful to open your eyes to something else. And as a young manager, manager I was just wondering, was that something you were really kind of... Um, aligned with when you're doing your coaching badges for instance mm. has it changed much since it has then? changed it has changed it has evolved and i'm sure it will evolve uh, like it evolves the way that um, you make decisions to be your lineup or your squad or or the way you speak to the team and when you speak to the team and what your message is on mass day and what is the content tactically on your mass day or how you review games everything evolves but evolves as well because these guys evolve as well and what they need today might be different to what they need in three months or in six months, and you have to keep your eyes open to that. Yes. You touched on a minute ago about touchline behaviour. You got a lovely yellow card last weekend. In the, in the After game. the game, eh? Yeah. In the game, I was good. Yeah. You're one game away from a, from a ban. How, how, how much would that affect you if you weren't on the touchline with your players? Well, I've been at home twice with COVID, you know, so I will be closer. Hopefully, they allow me to be closer if that's the case than, than being on a Zoom call. Obviously, I don't want to go through that. I will try to not to be in that position. Um, if it happens, we will adapt. But it's just not so much the ban, but the fact is, because you're so active and vocal on that touchline, mm. how much would it, do you think it would affect you know, when you, you're not there basically guiding the team? Yeah. we always playing. So I don't know why we get three yellows and the players can have five. You know, we are there every minute of every game. You know, some players are on the bench, sometimes they are injured, but we are there. We can have only three yellows. Players can It's not fair, no? <laughs> but, I mean, you seem to be getting them for pretty... I don't know. don't seem to be that, that serious. Pitch. You didn't listen to that conversation. So maybe I said some beautiful things, but maybe my English is not good enough. But do you think you can... Do you think you'll ever be able to change your sort of... Yes. Well, I think, I think I'm changing. <laughs> I want to think that. If you think different, let me know. But I it's think I, I, I. Yes, for sure. For sure. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Can you expand on what the conscious effort is? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I don't want to get sent off. Uh, and I think sometimes when I look at myself and I'm so agitated like this, I think it can. It can give an image that that I think don't think is is the best, and and sometimes maybe for the club. So. Um, 
sometimes it's difficult with certain decisions when, when you are there in the heat, you know, because as well you are representing the club, you want to defend them. And that's what it drives me, is to defend the players, to defend the club, nothing else. It's not about me, it's there to be on it, you know, and, and, uh, and make sure that as we are the best that we possibly can, as competitive as we possibly can, that's, that's the drive, it's, it's nothing else. You want the players to be cold and unemotional, don't you? To be quite clinical, so they kind of make the right decisions without emotion. So can you put yourself into their shoes and do the same on the touchline, so therefore you're almost dispassionate? What I don't allow is that that behaviour changes the focus, you know. And then I cannot look to the game with clarity or make decisions with clarity. What's the demand to the players, you know? I like, I don't like the players leaving the game like they are in in the sun, you know, and in a sunbed. I like the players to feel every single ball. You know, I demand them to do that. But with emotional part that they have to control for sure. Is, is that something that you saw when you were a player that you saw your manager or ask them doing something or managing something or is it something a player said to you that you don't want our manager doing that? I don't know. I think when you are there, you have to leave it, you know, and, and you have to be yourself. And I had managers that they could sit here and don't move and don't say a word. Some that they were shouting the whole time. Some others that, like I said, that they have the presence and, and that was more than enough to be there. You know, it's, it depends on, on the manager, I think. Oh, and then finally, to Mikel, you're, um, you're more agitated now than you ever were as a player. What, what's changed? Is it harder for you to do this? No, I don't think. I, I think if you ask players that play with me, I would say I was always on their backs. So, okay. yeah, I don't know. It's why I'm probably in 10 years' time, I will be very different. You think you can change? I think I would evolve in, in many ways, you know. I don't see it as something... I think something bad if affects the team in a bad way, you know. If I'm if I'm making decisions that is putting the, the club under pressure, the players under pressure, if it feels to get in support and allow them to leave the game better and make better decisions, I would continue to do it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, thank you. All the best. <laughs> thank you. Big decision in your life, man. I can't go back now. <laughs> oh, I see. Is that safe?